and hello everyone! Welcome to OEM and if this is your very first time joining us, I am just so, thr so thrilled to have you here because it's a very big day. It is, after a whole lot of work, over two years of work, the official launch date of my brand new cookbook. It's called Baking Wisdom. So it is available now. I know some of you have pre-ordered it, in which case I hope it arrived today. For a lot of people, you actually receive it on the day of the launch, in which case you can read along with me. Now, I'm not going to be like Ms. Rachel, um, whom I know very well because my granddaughter is obsessed with Ms. Rachel right here on YouTube. Um, but what I am going to do is to celebrate the launch of this brand new book, Assemble a Cake. Now, I know it's International Pie Day, it's March 14th, 3.14, but I thought a cake is more celebratory, so I hope you don't mind. I'd like to say hello to those of you who have joined me before and I know so well, like Kathy and Raph. Um, I always say hi to my mom, dad, and Michino. Bonnie, down the street, I know you're watching, and because there is not just this cake, but a second one, the swap, as we call it, is in the fridge. Bonnie, you know you're getting some cake later on. And I'd like to just take the time to tell you a bit about the book, to tell you a bit about the new episodes you're gonna see coming out right here on Oh Yum. And then also, because this book is about sharing what we know and learn and questions we have about baking, I always open the floor to you. I love hearing your responses, hearing your baking questions. That's how I take my inspiration and create new recipes. Um, so what I am going to assemble right now is the chocolate peanut butter cream cake. I can't recall exactly what page number it is. The book has 456 pages. I weighed the book. It weighs five pounds. Um, but here is something you'll love to hear because I know on Yum you are joining me from around the world, is that you can get a, an autographed hardcover copy of Baking Wisdom sent anywhere in the world. You will see the link below to Premier Collectibles. Now this is a limited time. They don't carry it in perpetuity like Amazon does, but if you want a signed copy shipped anywhere in the world, Go to the link that below on the screen um, above the complete recipe and you can get that signed copy. I was actually at the Random House Warehouse yesterday madly signing copies. So they are going right to Premier Collectibles right now. So <clears throat> let me take a minute. I've been talking a lot. I've been lucky enough to be doing a lot of news media and I've kind of worn out my voice a little bit, but I saved just enough for you. So what I want to talk about are the elements that I have here. So instead of spending an hour with the mixer going, making the cake batter and making the peanut butter cream and then the chocolate filling, I thought I'd have everything ready to go so that I can just chit chat while I assemble this cake. So I have three layers of a delicious chocolate cake. The layers um, are eight inches, 20 centimeters across and I like to make recipes um, and you'll see in this book none of my cakes dome on top. I work really hard when I develop these recipes. Those little things as bakers that drive us crazy. Like when you get a dome top to a cake that you have to slice off and ultimately waste cake. Well, what's the point of that? So I design my recipes so you don't have to do that. We have our three distinct layers. I have a peanut butter cream. You could almost call it a peanut butter mousse but it is a little bit more dense and it is so creamy and silky and it's a combination of peanut butter cream cheese, but I do fold in whipped cream and it's sweetened and I see the questions are coming in already. And then before I start decorating, I also have my go-to chocolate fudge, filling, sauce, everything. Um, and it is a combination of butter and whipping cream, but it's not a ganache. Uh, and then I add brown sugar, cocoa powder, and melted chocolate, stir it together. And so when it's chilled, it handles and can be piped like a frosting, but when it's fluid, it works like a fudge sauce. So in addition to the fudge filling I have here, 
I have some of the same fudge filling that I'm keeping warm because we're going to make a drip cake out of this cake. Now, I see some questions uh, coming in. Uh, Bhakti is ask asking a very good question. Hi, Anna. Can I sub corn syrup for glucose syrup? <clears throat> that is a very good question. If you are making confections, so lollipops, caramel candies, anything that is straight candy, typically no because the corn syrup is needed in some recipes for one consistency or one sweetening behavior and glucose syrup is there for another. And so in the case of uh, something like my saltwater taffy, if you replace one with the other, you won't get that chewiness. And can I tell you, you can ask the lovely Michael Olson here because the first time I made saltwater taffy, I used glucose syrup and I cooked it a little too far and didn't he have to go to the dentist the next day because he actually pulled out a filling by eating. My saltwater taffy was not nice and chewy. I can tell you by the time the recipe made it in the book, I had definitely um, fixed that. So that is a very good question to ask. So what I'm going to do to fill the inside of the cake, I want to alternate between the peanut butter and the chocolate. So I'm going to pipe rings starting with the peanut butter because the peanut butter is going to be on the outside of the cake so that's kind of the leading color. I'm going to pipe in a little in the middle here and you've seen me use a cake wheel plenty of times right here on Oh Yum but something I've picked up because I pay, pay attention to social media too is everybody. If you don't own a cake turntable or a cake wheel, if you own a microwave, you already have a cake turntable. So you can pull out that little rotating plastic wheelie bit and then the glass tray that goes on top and that can double as your cake wheel uh, when you're using it. Sometimes the microwave glass trays have a little lip so if you're doing fancy frosting work you just have to be wary of that. My next step, I'm piping some of this chocolate and for this part, this assembly, I'm not worrying so much. You don't need a piping tip here because, of course, a cake layer is going to get placed right on top. So what I'm aiming for is three peanut butter layers, or three peanut butter rings, and two chocolate rings. So when you slice into it, you see that striping so nicely. So I start from the outside and work to the center, like so. And now I can put on my first, my second cake layer. I have lots of wet towels because when you're dealing with chocolate, why did I pick yellow and pink to wear today? I should have picked brown and darker brown. Oh well, here we are. <clears throat> oh, Sharon's asking, can the cake be made gluten-free and still look perfect with no dome? I find it easier to get no dome when you have a gluten-free cake because you usually don't have quite the structure you do with flour. Um, I have not tested this cake recipe using gluten-free flour, but I will say, Sharon, that um, there are a few brands of gluten-free flour brand blends that are more universally available. I used to always say for every one cup of all-purpose flour, use two-thirds of a cup of brown rice flour, a third of a cup of tapioca starch, and half a teaspoon of xanthan gum, and that's a good starting point. Um, but there are brands uh, like um, Cup 4 Cup, that are very, very good. And I have great results with Bob's Red Mill um, gluten-free flour baking blend as a one-to-one -one substitution for taste, for texture, and behaving just like all-purpose flour. So I hope that helps you. That is not a sponsor support, that is just personal practice and use over time. Um, oh, Karen, I'm glad you like the microwave trick. Uh, Jermaine, of course, a lazy Susan. Before I got into serious baking, um, I used to use a Lazy Susan, like the, the low wooden ones, and they're great actually for wedding cakes when you've got a really big cake to work with. Oh, thank you, Michael. Um, and Nana, you've been watching me since the start of TV. Can you believe I've been on TV since the start of TV, what it feels like? I've actually been on um, television for, oh gosh, 2002, 2000, over 20 years. Can you believe it? And when we first started taping t uh, TV, it was done 
almost in this style. We called it live to tape and it was virtually live. No pauses, no edits, just me baking along, getting chocolate all over the place, just like I'm doing now. Oh, I should point out, this chocolate cake recipe is particularly tasty. Um, you know I love butter, and I am not one to shy away from butter, except, of course, if someone wants a vegan recipe. But this a recipe, like some chocolate cake recipes, uses uh, mayonnaise at the base instead of butter or vegetable oil. And mayonnaise, when you think about it, is an emulsion. It's the blending of eggs and oil together. And so that helps. Um, I have a brownie recipe that uses mayonnaise. It really helps to make a tender and moist cake. And I have used a lot of peanut butter cream. I hope I have enough for the outside. That's okay, we have a swap. And now you always want to kind of go down to eye level to make sure your cake is level. And give it a good press. Is that looking good, Michael? Give it a turn so you can get a good look at it. I'm wiping my fingers again. <laughs> yeah. Is this looking level? Am I ready to put the peanut butter on the top? I feel like we're in good shape. I'm going to put so much decor on top of it. If it's not level, you're honestly not going to see it. All right, so now we want to cover the cake, and this is going to be a naked style cake, so I'm just going to have a sheer layer on the sides and more coverage on top. So I'm going to use up my peanut butter cream that's in this piping bag, and I can also, I've already filled a few piping bags with different tips. So I can add some here. It's very exciting. You know, I worked on this book um, over the past few years. It takes two years to write a cookbook between the testing and then the retesting. And I have recipe testers. So after I create a recipe to the point that I'm happy with it, then I give it to my recipe testers. And I know some of you are watching from the States, some from Canada, some from other countries in the world. Um, I test and verify my recipes by volume, meaning cups and teaspoons, and I verify it by weights, meaning in grams. And so you'll see every single recipe, like you see below, has both the grams and the volume measures, so it's up to you. Um, personally, I prefer grams because you'll get a more consistent result every time. Just, you can see how the cake's a little wiggly because of the soft cream, which is why I have a swap cake that has had time to chill that I can finish decorating. And now I'm just going to pipe. This is a great way to get a little extra frosting on the side of your cake. If, you've already, if you're already using the piping bag. And then I'm just looking to get a sheer layer to fill in the gaps not full coverage. Let's see if I can read while masking a cape at the same time. Hello from Vancouver. Oh, Raph, yes, the testing. Well, most of the time it's delicious. Sometimes I don't get it spot on. And I'll be honest, I'm, I am not one to settle. So if I'm not excited about something when I'm trying making it, then I need to kind of go back to the drawing board. And I can tell when I'm getting close on something. Um, and it, it can take anywhere, depending on the recipe, it can take three tries if it's something simple. It can take seven tries. If by about try three or four, I'm not getting towards what I want, then I go back to square one and revisit um, how I create a recipe. And for those who don't know me, um, I went to cooking school a long, long time ago. Um, I didn't specialize in baking when I went to cooking school. I did general culinary arts, and then my baking apprenticeship was on the job. I worked at a number of restaurants um, that were on the smaller side, and so they would have a pastry chef, but they wouldn't have a pastry Well, now that's lopsided. I'm going to just... There we go. Um, so if the pastry chef wanted a day off, I would be the one to volunteer to fill in. And so my whole job 
would then for a day or two days a week, I would get the list of what I had to do and I would get the recipe book and I had to figure it out on my own. And so that's where a lot of my hands-on baking experience and my wanting to know why something is happening or not happening um, really helped me improve my baking. And then I would find out the hard way sometimes when the pastry chef would come back and say, well, no, do it this way. And that was my learning process. So there we go. We've got a nice, this is a rich peanut butter cream. So you don't need an excessive amount on it. I'm just going to grab a bowl from my little supply cabinet here. I should do a tour of the kitchen someday, shouldn't I? Because I have all my, all my glass bowls are on this side. All my solid color bowls are on that side. Uh, measuring tools, scales, measuring cups are on this side. Small hand tools, that side. So I know where everything is at any time. Michael's getting cl close to pull out my peanut butter cake. And how's everyone doing now? We've got, ooh, we've got almost 200 people watching. This is great. Helter Skelter, oh, I've seen you pop up before, is asking if this is my Easter cake this year. I don't know that it'll be my Easter cake, but I can tell you that I will be back multiple times before we even get to Easter, because this is the kickoff to a combination of a Baking Wisdom pre-tape and live stream series. So this is the first live stream. I'll be back in two weeks, same time, same place, so March 28th with another live stream with an Easter inspired recipe. But in between each of those, I have taped episodes of Baking Wisdom where I feature recipes from the book. And you can look forward to my millionaire tart next week. And that's a good one. So alternating weeks, I'll be pre-tape and live sharing all these little bits of Baking Wisdom. He just wants to lean over. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. There we go. Now I'm gonna swap this out for the one that I have already chilled. And hello to Lori in Thunder Bay, Fernanda. Um, oh, Fernanda, you've been following me on social, me social media. Fernanda's asking how we liked uh, Panaderia Rosetta uh, in Mexico City. So a week ago I was in Mexico City. What a dynamic and delicious city. And I love that bakery, the guava pastry incredible such a treat because of course what I love about traveling is that you taste pastries or variations that you wouldn't get at home and guava of course are not a local fruit here in southern Ontario in Canada and so I really appreciated it and the pineapple empanada was just out of this world too all right so now let's bring back our and Peace to Nigeria too, nice to hear from you. Um, but that does bring up a point. I, we love traveling, and so you've probably seen a couple of new episodes of Food Travel Diaries pop up on the channel too. Most recently, Uzes France and Lisbon, Portugal, where we make the um, Portuguese custard tart. That was such a phenomenal experience. Of course, we did lots of filming in Mexico, and can't wait to deliver more recipes. I don't. I didn't walk away from my Mexico City trip knowing exactly what I wanted to make. I think when I arrived, I thought I was going to make churros. They're really hard to make at home, which is why you go out for them. So I think I'm going to focus on another type of pastry. But let's focus on the top of this cake while I see your notes come in. Susan likes the idea of chocolate and peanut butter. Um, and of course, you can find in this book so many foundation recipes. So if you don't want to do the peanut butter, you could make this cake recipe and do, I have a brilliant recipe for an ermine frosting. It's for my white velvet cake and that is custard-like and creamy, but it's not as sweet as a buttercream and it handles like a buttercream. But like I said, it's not as sweet. Oh, and hello, hello from UAE, Moscow. We got everybody joining us today. This is great, Michael. Oh, I get so excited. Uh, and Emily, banana bread. You can't go wrong. I have three bananas getting very ripe on my kitchen counter. They're going to turn into banana rib. Oh, Michael says two. Two bananas. Well, then I think I have to make, there is a chocolate peanut butter, a chocolate chip peanut butter banana cookie recipe in Baking Wisdom. So that uses a smaller amount of bananas. <clears throat> and hello, Susan in Arizona. 
great to see all the greetings. I'm so, I've really appreciated your support and responses, um, especially today with the launch of the book. Okay, so now this is where you just go along. First thing I want to do is put my drip on and then I'll pipe on top of it. So I'll just use this bowl too. I just want to test my drip. So that it's not too runny. I think we're doing good there. But you don't want it to glop up and be too thick. Keeping in mind that the chocolate sauce will hit the cold cake and start to set. And so I have to find my zen place because this is one of those things. Usually if I do something like this, I put on, I, here's something you probably didn't realize about me. I love house music. So I'll put on good like beach house music with the positive vibes and just go with the beat. I used to do that when I was doing wedding cakes. Oh, and I got a, of course, I got a lump as soon as I start. Is this a good angle for you, Michael? Yes. All right, catching those drips. Doing the drips does not have ASMR. They make lots of cool sounds, but dripping isn't one of them. I have a new artist from Toronto for you called Demure. Demure? Okay. He's a house music magician. I feel like house music is going through a bit of a revival right now. I think we all need, I like the positivity of it. It's generally happy. Oh, you're liking these shots? And there we go. I do like a good chocolate uh, drip on a drip cake. Caramel can be trickier because it's so soft that it can run right down the cake. And so I don't worry about covering the top of the cake. I actually want to see the peanut butter. But now we start just randomly Piping some detail. I'm going to go in a circle first and see how far in I can work. And I'll rotate between peanut butter rosettes. Cho the chocolate filling. This is just over the top in terms of decadent. And you know I'm going to be having a slice of this. I've got a different piping tip. Away we go. I think I can do this while reading. <clears throat> uh, shout out to the Philippines. Always love to hear from the Philippines. Um, thank you, Wendy. I'm glad you love the book. And there's Nana's writing something about Mexico. Uh, the cream they use in Mexico for dips when they serve sauce. Different bowls. Oh, yeah, I don't, that's a good question about the, the creams. I didn't do a whole lot of research on the cream side of things. I was amazed at how I did a cooking class and we learned how to make 10 different types of salsa. Some fresh, some roasted, all chili pepper based. Oh, except for the ranchero. Had a little, little chili pepper, but I loved that each salsa has a different use and then what I was thrilled to find out I had no idea is you don't mix salsas so if you go to a taqueria and they put four salsas in front of you you're not supposed to put all four salsas look at Michael's face is like what because we used to do that you put all you know because you're supposed to appreciate each salsa for what it is so you use one salsa at a time when you're um, putting salsas on your tacos we had so many delicious tacos how's this looking Michael Got a couple of blips here. I love seeing the notes coming in. Hello, Colette from Maryland. And uh, Bujita from Ontario, Canada, neighbor. Uh, and Missouri. Hello, Kelby. And just a reminder, if you're just joining us, that this new book, Baking Wisdom, is out officially today. Um, you can order on Amazon. 
But if you want an autographed copy shipped anywhere in the world, it's the Premier Collectibles for a limited time um, that is offering it. And I'm really grateful to them for that. I'm just going to cover some of my gaps here. So we're just building a lot of texture, baking and talking at the same time. I think I'm going to fill all the way. I'm just going to fill the entire top of the cake. You're okay with that, Michael? Yep. I've got enough. That's one thing I'm very careful of. If you've made my recipes before, a pet peeve of mine is when you get a baking recipe and it doesn't have enough frosting for the cake. Like, what if you want to play with it? What if you want to do couture, uh, decor on top? And m most frostings can be frozen. This peanut butter cream, if you have extra, say you don't go to all of this detail, you can freeze the peanut butter cream. You can freeze the, the chocolate fudge sauce. And in fact, this lasts in the fridge for weeks anyhow. Um, so you've got great flexibility there. Now, I think we're feeling pretty festive now with this cake. And because I've been baking away from the book, I happen to have some pieces of my chewy chocolate chip cookie bars, which you can actually find the recipe for this right here on the channel. And you'll see in the photo that I actually used sponge toffee to put on top, which added a beautiful crunch. You don't have to put anything on top, but it's a party. We're trying to go over the top here. So I am just going to add some of that. And then I even have some salt roasted peanuts I can sprinkle. I was going to pull out the gold flake and I thought, okay, just simmer down. That is way too much. Um, hello, Jay from Glen Cove. Um, oh, and Lena, I can understand you have to go to sleep. It's late. So cheers to you. Coburg, Ontario. Oh my goodness. I went to Queen's University in Kingston. So I used to drive past Coburg on a regular basis to get to school. Um, believe it or not, another fun fact. Now, you know, I love house music. Uh, I studied political science before I got into baking. So a lot of you who bake, bake to relax or distract yourself. I was one of those bakers when I was in university and it, I didn't real, I thought it was just a hobby, but it was actually de-stressing me. And so I know a lot of you bake to find your happy place. And I really hope that you will take on recipes from Baking Wisdom. There's something for everybody. So if you're new to baking and you're just curious, that's all I ask of you. Be curious. Be curious about baking because the front of the book, which is all in a separate color, deals with things like how altitude affects baking, how baking bakes. So what happens to a cake when you put it in the oven or a pastry or a bread? Because that's the part you can't control. All you can control are the ingredients and the way you combine them. And I think that is just so fascinating when you learn what a protein does, what a starch does, um, what are the components in an egg that makes an egg work? How do you make substitutions? How do you fix things like over whipped whipped cream and over whipped egg whites? Lots and lots. Oh, good morning from the Philippines. <clears throat> oh, and Andrea's asking, hello from Mexico. Is it possible to change cow's milk from raw goat's milk? I think it depends on the application. That's a very good question. I know the dulce de leche in Mexico is goat's milk and it's delicious. It's, it's got that nice little tang to it. Um, I think the only thing you have to, I think it should work. Just the thing to be wary about is your fat content. Um, the sugar content may vary a little bit, but ultimately it's the fat that I think is going to determine what's happening. What do they call it in Mexico? <clears throat> oh, uh, yeah. Can you tell me what the name is of the goat's milk dulce de leche in Mexico? I forget the name, even though I had it just last week. Cataplana? No, uh, no not Cataplana. Uh, hmm. Oh, and Sayer is asking, Chef, what recipes do you recommend for spring? It is. Yay! We can finally talk about spring here in Southern Ontario. We're getting a late taste of winter. There's more snow on the ground than we've had all winter, it seems. Um, early spring, I lean towards citrus desserts but because here our fruit season doesn't start. Cajeta. Ah, um, cajeta? cajeta? Cajeta. Yes, thank you for looking that up. We like to answer our questions here. Um, so citrus desserts to start, and I always find citrus desserts, like a lemon meringue recipe always suits the Easter season. Um, soon enough, we can start getting excited about rhubarb and strawberries, and those to me are my favorite fruits of spring. 
Chocolate always has a place, but you can lighten it up with citrus flavors or with the fresh fruit. Emily's asking a good question. Can I reduce sugar in recipes? Yes, and Alejandra, can I hit the, the spelling with the, the J, which is an H. Thank you, thank you. Um, Emily, you can reduce sugar in some recipes, um, and this is where Baking Wisdom takes you through. What sugar does is more than just sweeten. It adds moisture and it adds structure, especially any recipe that calls for whipping egg whites or getting volume in things. The sugar helps hold that volume in place. Um, if you're trying to reduce your sugar, you can look at different options. You can look at unrefined sugar. If it's um, for health reasons, um, you can explore options like agave syrup behaves like sugar in baking more effectively in terms of getting your baking structure. And coconut palm sugar um, registers lower on the glycemic index. Please know I'm not a dietitian. I am a baker. I'm thinking about the technical, how you're going to get that good result um, by reducing the sugar. So I hope that gives you enough information to go on. <clears throat> oh, Trisha's asking about malted barley syrup in a bagel dough recipe. There are different variations. Um, I, yes, and I have a honey bagel recipe and I put honey in the water as well. But the malted barley syrup also offers that sweetness and it's also about keeping the bagel dough nice and dense. There's a good dense, subtle sweetness to it. And so you're fine with either style. I think it's a matter of preference and that's why there are so many ways to make a bagel. So I love, I love seeing um, your points and your responses and Aunt Dini is allergic to peanuts and that is very common and 100% yes, you can use almond butter. Um, you could grind nuts to make a nut butter if, if, uh, if you can have other nuts. Um, if you're allergic to all nuts, then I would just, I would steer you away to, to a different frosting and there's so many great frosting recipes and all brand new. Like I said, I've been working on this for two years and it's been hard to sort of stay mum, but it's a work in progress. And if you ask me, am I working on my next project? The answer is yes, there's another book coming down the pipeline, um, but you're going to have to wait a little while. We're here to celebrate Baking Wisdom. <clears throat> and we are, this is good. I thought, you know what? I'll be chit-chatting for about half an hour, but I love seeing your responses coming in. Thank you for liking the video. If you had to step away or have to step away, you can always come back and catch up on, on what we are here because this will live on the channel. Uh, again, look forward to a live stream again in two weeks and look forward to a, a, my millionaire tart recipe um, in next, next Tuesday. It will launch right here on the channel. We picked um, Rob who manages the channel. I think we picked the same time. So 6.30 p.m. Eastern every Tuesday. You'll see something new pop up here. And Lise, hazelnuts and chocolate. Uh, yeah, of course. I love hazelnuts and chocolate. There is, if you want a big baking project, I have a recipe for torta settevelli in here. That's seven layer tort. Now that is definitely for a special occasion. Uh, and if I were making that now, we'd be here for a while because it is a combination of chocolate sponge, hazelnut mousse, chocolate cream, and then there's a mirror glaze on top layered seven times over. Oh, with uh, praline hazelnuts too. It is delicious. And Margaret is looking for the best strong vanilla. Mm. There are a few, and I know we're, we're very sensitive to the cost of baking ingredients now. I mean, even in the States, eggs went up in price, but everything has gone up. Butter, dairy, all of our favorite baking ingredients, including vanilla. Um, Ma Bourbon Madagascar is sort of your good, all-purpose, Every, use in everything baking vanilla. And I do believe in buying a good vanilla, a pure vanilla, because then you actually use less of it. Um, so you can actually hold back a little bit on your baking because it is so intense that it flavors your recipes further. Um, I did pick up some good quality Mexican vanilla when I was in Mexico, and I like to use that in robust desserts where, because it has a, big aroma and a big flavor. So for chocolate, for coffee, anything with a big, um, even spices, it can compete against that. Tahitian vanilla is very costly. 
It is beautiful, it is delicate, and it is mostly about the aroma. Um, so I like to use Tahitian where vanilla is the one key flavor. So a creme brulee, a cheesecake, and you really want, if you're going to use the bean, you want to use it in a recipe where it has time to infuse. So either in a liquid on the stove first, or a slow bake like a cheesecake. So I hope that helps answer your questions. It's hard to speak to brands because that changes where, we, where we're from and where we live. But in terms of types, I hope that gives you a guiding. Oh, and Nana's asking, do I use farm eggs or store-bought? Store well, it depends on the time of year. Um, we support our local farmer's market. So in the spring, summer, and fall, we always support Lyle, the egg man. Lyle, if you're watching, I know he watches sometimes. Um, he has delicious eggs. Um, otherwise, I do, you know, I have to go to the grocery store like everybody else, and so I will do it. And actually, that brings up a point. When I'm testing my recipes, or my recipe testers are uh, testing recipes, while I like using good quality chocolate, we don't all have access to that. And so we test our recipes to using good old grocery store chocolate that comes in the squares because I want to know that no matter what you use, you're going to have the best result you can. And things like chocolate can behave differently and we all have different budgets and so there's something in here for everyone. You don't have to have cake wheels and stand mixers to get into baking. If you have a bowl, a whisk and a spatula and a couple of basic pans, you can get into the kitchen and bake. And you know what? I think this is a great time to sign off. Tina, you can order the book. Um, it's not sold through Indonesia, but if you go to the Premier Collectibles, you have to check. There is a shipping cost. Um, check it out and see if you can order it. Um, I'm hoping that we can have this in multiple languages sometime soon, but right now the English launch is thanks to you and your support. You helped inspire a lot of these recipes because I've worked on this lot through the last three years and we were doing so much on the live streams. Remember way back when, when I made croissants on the live stream and I was talking about the Pearson Square, how to make a higher ratio butter fat for your croissants using not high ratio butter? It made the book. So it's all spelled out for you here. You are amazing. You're amazing bakers. You're the best fans. I love you all. And so now on International Pie Day, we're going to celebrate with cake. And I look forward to seeing you in two weeks when I'm back for another live stream. I love seeing your notes. I'm going to read through them again because I know I miss them. And that way I know when I'm back, I'll have fresh uh, questions to answer for you. And one last one. Let's see. Uh, yes, I do use coconut oil in my baking. It's a great dairy-free option for baking. Uh, and uh, Yesi, Yesi is asking, will I have book signings in person? Yes, I will. And I will be posting my book signing uh, locations and times through my social media. Um, so go, you can either sign on to Facebook or Instagram. I'm trying to get on to TikTok. I have two whole videos on TikTok with more coming soon. Uh, so keep an eye out. Uh, for that, for where, where I'll be and when. It's been wonderful spending time with you. This evening might be morning your time. We've got a decadent chocolate peanut butter cream cake to now dive into. Oh, sh I should cut into it. I know, I'm trying to sign off, but there's more. We're, we're all happy here. There's more to, to do. You need to see the inside of this cake. I don't think I've done a single live stream without cutting into the final result, and I'm not about to start now. And I still, to this day, get nervous every time I have to pull that full, you know, that first slice is hard to extract. There we go. Oh, we've got chocolate, we've got peanut butter, and we've got a fork. I haven't had dinner yet, so I'm only gonna have one bite, <clears throat> but this has been fantastic. Chris from Toronto, just across the lake. You are all wonderful, and I know you are gonna have a great time making these recipes. I invite you to get creative. I like when you express yourself through your decoration, the way you change flavors, and this is why we have the conversations about 
how to tailor these recipes so you can make them your own. I know you can make this recipe and I, it's been my pleasure to share my baking wisdom with you. Mm. Mm -hmm. mm -mm -mm. Oh, that is a moist cake. I haven't had a chocolate cake in a long time. Yeah, International Pie Day is over. It is now International Cake Day. Thank you so much, everyone. I'll see you in two weeks. Mm, Giovanni watched. Cool. Awesome.